Ladies and gentlemen, so let me uh, now uh, uh, get a bit away from testing to another level. Uh, as, as you have heard, I am from the Center of Phenogenomics. Uh, we are I think one of the biggest infrastructures in the Czech Republic, uh, and also one of the three major infrastructures in Europe in our discipline. So we study gene manipulations to learn uh, what individual genes do and worldwide uh, in uh, consortium C, we want to know what all genes do. We want to write an encyclopedia and well know what these what genes are good for. Uh, also, uh, uh, if we are interested in both basic and applied research. We are testing various uh, substances, future therapeutic substances substances with a number of companies. So, uh, when uh, we came across COVID for the first time, uh, I thought that Czech Republic became a manufacturing place for face masks and so on. So we decided to take another route. Uh, and testing was done uh, everywhere, and we thought we would concentrate on the future. In addition to testing, the Czech Republic has a very good base for making or developing new drugs, and uh, that is, uh, we are even better at that than at testing. So what do we know about COVID? Not so much. It has been here just uh, for a few months. So maybe we were really taken aback by the situation. Millions of people uh, became ill and thousands died. When we look at the influenza, there, of course, uh, figures will be bigger. And Dr. Primula was right when he said about, uh, I don't know, 1,200 100 patients died um, in the past in a year. We know how the virus gets into the cell, how it uh, uses it, why some people die. And also, we know that because of the huge pandemic, many companies started developing vaccines and uh, medical drugs. So we'll wait uh, which vaccine will be really successful. Maybe additional ones will be developed. There are still other remaining questions. We don't know so much about the biology. Uh, so here, the pathogenic characteristic of the virus, uh, how it is it transferred, what the mechanisms are, how it gets into people, what determines uh, or drives mortality, and also which uh, drugs are the most useful ones. And what about the consequences? Uh, here you can see some other uh, questions, but mostly attention focuses on lungs. So you can see an alveolus, and you can see how it's surrounded by epithelial cells, and next to the alveolus, there is a vessel, which is very important, because this is how oxygen gets in, and then we can breathe, and the body can uh, work. 
Under normal circumstances, the vessel and the system are integrated. There are factors causing there is no inflammation. But when a virus appears, uh, influenza or bacteria, the virus, uh, not only it gets into epithelial cells, but also into endothelial cells, and then they work much differently. The then coagulation of blood also acts, and that activates cells which uh, then attract uh, neutrophils, macrophages, uh, cells of the immune system, and they cause an overproduction of cytokines, uh, which uh, usually uh, uh, terminate the infection. But uh, because uh, they propagate, and uh, there's coagulation in vessels, uh, and the process cannot be terminated, then uh, the cells, it's not that they would destroy the virus, but uh, then at the end of the disease, lungs uh, do not work. They become fibrotic. Uh, they cannot function properly. How does the virus get into the cell? Because of a specific receptor. Uh, 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 there is the HIV receptor, and there is ACE2 in coronavirus. It's not expressed only in lungs, but also in the stomach, in the GI, thymus, testes, also in the brain. So when we focus only on lungs, we may miss uh, many other things, and the care of the patient will not be complete. So when we look at the two ways of entry, it's lungs and the GI tract. Uh, so uh, aerosol droplets uh, or also touch food, uh, and that's also very important because patients uh, who were uh, 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 who left the hospital and are COVID negative may still shed the virus in the stools, which is very alarming, as you know from various news in Vienna and other countries. They find the infection in waste water. Yes, they, someone does it here too, okay. So I don't read all the papers. Uh, but the virus is uh, then, uh, of course, uh, secreted, not just uh, breathing uh, or shed, not just breathing. It spreads in the body and it can endanger many other organs because there is a huge abundance in the circulatory system. That means that it can threaten all the organs where it is expressed. It's bound to the receptor which otherwise has other functions to get into the cell. There is a so-called spike protein, and it has to be split by protease, uh, which is here. Here I can show you again. This is a serine protease, and it's interesting. Uh, in the process of cleavage, there are also inhibitors. So, if you, in fact, inhibit the cleavage of the protein, it has a positive effect on the infection. So, spike one protein is attached and it's activated. And, uh, in fact, the virus can penetrate the cell. Uh, so this ACE is a protease, uh, which is very important to preserve uh, the uh, 
and jet engine system. This is important for blight pressure and uh, for circulation. So, and depending on where H2 is expressed, it has various roles, can be in the pancreas, where it takes care of their things, and it can also be in uh, the kidney. So it's important also for uh, excretion, and the H2 receptor uh, is controlled by interferon, which uh, is useful in all the viral infections uh, uh, during the response. Interferon gamma causes A2 to be expressed more than usually. The second problem with the receptor is that there is huge polymorphism, different in various um, like Asian populations, American, and so on. So none of us uh, is identical to another person. And the level of expansion, and depending where the protein is, then affects the spread of the virus of the infection. Uh, you have about 1,700 variants. 62 are in the coding regions of ACE2, and 32 uh, affect uh, amino acids. So there are studies uh, how these variants can contribute to uh, the disease. When we go back to ACE2, it's important to preserve a certain balance in the angiotensin system. Angiotensin is uh, cleaved into angiotensin 1, uh, then 2. And this is the active peptide, and ACE2 then carries on cleaving. But if you have um, coronavirus, then the function of the balance of cleaving the peptide, uh, this situation is not preserved, and uh, the inflammation occurs. There are some other consequences. In fact, there are many. But uh, when speaking about the function of the virus and receptor in the bloodstream, uh, what matters is uh, that the virus causes an agglomeration of coagulation factors, blood, it activates macrophages by uh, allowing the coagulation of pros one that normally causes deactivation of macrophages and uh, that uh, also uh, promotes a cytokine storm. So it's not just lungs, uh, receptors in the brain, heart, kidney, GI tract, in the gut, and uh, we don't know what it does in these various areas. We can only know what we know from SARS and MERS, what approximately happens, but we are still not sure in um, SARS-CoV-2. To learn more about these mechanisms, we create animal models. But it's not easy, because an animal model should answer to the pathogenesis as we know it in humans. So we should be able to use it for testing of therapeutic substances. So 
Uh, we have non-human primates, uh, various monkeys, such as macaque monkeys, that they can be used for testing. But in the Czech Republic, we don't have a facility to use uh, this model. So, so it's extremely expensive. Uh, and uh, so these urine mouse models are used most frequently. Where we have uh, all of the molecular tools, uh, here they are again. What can be studied uh, in addition to SARS CoV 2, we had SARS 1 and MERS from the same family. Uh, uh, three out of seven uh, viruses attacking humans. One gets to us via camels, other uh, via civet cats. So all three coronaviruses are very dangerous. Uh, there are some that cause mild symptoms and they can be studied in various models. So, if you have non-human primates, uh, there are ferrets, uh, or there's also the pig, uh, but uh, it's also difficult to use. So, uh, we can only use models uh, that, we st that we have here, and that is mice. Uh, but, of course, mice have a different ACE2, uh, so nothing much happens if it's not uh, immunocompromised or if it's not old. But uh, if uh, you uh, have a mouse of that kind, uh, you can try to create an optimal organism that would uh, recap uh, what we see in humans. So, uh, these are excerpts from an article published last week. A mouse uh, expressing human ACE2. And this receptor is expressed in the lungs. It has a promoter. The promoter is a regulating unit uh, deciding where the protein uh, should uh, be. This uh, was published uh, in the Cell Journal, but the tests were not too perfect. Uh, still, if the mouse has a human receptor and we add SARS cov Two, the mice, most of them die, some survive, uh, no one knows why, but the survivors, uh, when uh, the virus is applied uh, uh, repeatedly, uh, they survive with very small consequences. Uh, a similar model was developed using cytokratin uh, 18. So, uh, again, you have the expression cytokratin, but also only in some organs. Then there are other models with a composite promoter. The problem being that the protein is expressed in a different way, but it does not correspond to the human situation. And here is the time axis. This morning I was asked how we do the testing. And so it's a genetically modified mouse. Parameters are collected. After two weeks, the mouse is killed. You find the pathogenesis. The genesis. In surviving mice, they get another dose. 
And you test whether the previous infection will affect the following infection. So uh, there were not so many mice that we could really use the data. But this model, when uh, you get the human ACE2 into the lungs, uh, the mouse is permissive, uh, viruses multiply, and the pathogenesis is similar to that in humans. And for the pre-exposure of the coronavirus causes, that is the second stage. Uh, if the coronavirus appears, it has a beneficial effect. So, models all together. We can use non-animal models, uh, that means cells, uh, how the virus gets into the cell. Then animal models, non-human primates, uh, that would be great, but who would pay for all that research? Of course, there are special infrastructures in Germany and France. Then there are human primates, which are held in a special facility near an atomic uh, power plan to protect the facility against activists. And then models that can be adapted to our needs. At our center, we were discussing how to do it fast. So we have a therapeutic application based on CRISPR uh, and thanks to viral vectors. So we used a vector and we uh, inserted the human ACE2 after one or two weeks. And depending on how many viruses we insert, these are other viruses. Then uh, they again, uh, then again, the human ACE2 is expressed in the lungs, and you can test uh, the pathology. The first uh, results from last week show how the expression of ACE2 has uh, grown. The blue line, it's a control line, but it is positive because if the human age to is recognized, the murine one as well. That means that very quickly and inexpensively we can prepare an environment for testing uh, these substances, so it's really fast. The cohort can be produced very fast. The AV vector can be used for other molecules, and we can test more pathogens. The disadvantage is certain variability. It can be done only in uh, the lungs. There's also a bit of a problem with the size, uh, because large constructs are impossible. At present, if we had a site that would you want to use it, we are ready. Uh, we are collaborating with UHAB and other institutes, with also with a German site and an American one. They are interested. Now, the sophisticated part, while other colleagues in the world created humanized models by taking a promoter that allows the expression of the human age to in the lungs or another organ, there the expression is different. So using CRISPR-Cas, which is a 
technique used here, uh, we decided to uh, have uh, the promoter using axons, which are transcribed. And then we have the first uh, mice, and we are testing the integration mice with human H2. CRISPR-Cas, I must mention our importance in the European community. You can see uh, the diagram. The, this is from October, but we manipulated over 200 genes. Uh, and I think we are at the forefront in Europe. We serve scientists uh, worldwide. Uh, so you can see the Czech Republic is really important, and international sites use our uh, results or our procedures. Now we are getting to the variants very fast. They are important, and to understand all of them is important. So using our system, when we get the human construct into a mouse, then we have uh, these uh, variants, uh, and then we can decide of what importance they are for individuals. Uh, Yes, I have to uh, wind up. So, what uh, is really available? Humanized viruses, uh, ACE2 knockout as a control for experiments, uh, TNPRC2 knockout, that's a transmembrane serum protease knockout. Uh, and we are now not thinking just of coronavirus. Uh, there can be influenza. So you have proteases which are important uh, for a virus to uh, enter the cells. There are serine proteases, there are also inhibitors. Uh, uh, one is very important, Lacti, with 15 domains inhibiting trypsin, trypsin activities. When you pick it from skin, then it's disintegrated by all the proteases. Now, the future humanized mouse with an endogenous promoter, then we can uh, perform variants and also mutants. Uh, which are expressed not just in the lungs, but uh, uh, also in other cells, to co-create the entire picture of where the virus causes the disaster. So we have the the two facility, but what we miss is state-of-the-art animal facility to study not just coronavirus, but also we should uh, focus on the future. So this is a warning, really. In the Czech Republic, we should have a state-of-the-art facility for studying various infections. Thank you very much.